Hey everyone, this lesson is on vesicular bullous skin conditions, namely pemphigus vulgaris and bullous pemphigoid. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about what these conditions are, how we can distinguish them, and what are some of the similarities and differences between them. So to start, we're going to talk about pemphigus vulgaris first. Pemphigus vulgaris is an autoimmune skin condition resulting in non-puritic intraepidermal bullae. So this is by far the more concerning condition between pemphigus vulgaris and bullous pemphigoid. You can remember that pemphigus vulgaris is the bad one. It is vulgar. So pemphigus vulgaris, it is a vulgar condition. The median age of onset for pemphigus vulgaris, if it's about 40 to 60 years old. Now, with pemphigus vulgaris, the bullae themselves erupt rapidly. So they may present with erosion. So with this condition, these bullae form, but they're very weak. They're very flaccid bullae. So they can actually just kind of pop and ooze out their contents and they can just look like erosions after time, such as here in this picture. Now, pemphigus vulgaris can be a lethal condition. We want to make sure we get the diagnosis correctly. If you see a patient come in with bullae, check their mouth. And with pemphigus vulgaris, this is often key to making the diagnosis of pemphigus vulgaris. Most often, bullae will be present within the mouth around 90%. And again, because these bullae may erupt, you might not see the bullae in the mouth, but you'll see erosions like in this picture here. Now, a couple of other key distinguishing features of pemphigus vulgaris is the Nikolsky sign and the Asbo-Hansen sign. These are clinical signs that you can assess when you actually check uh, the bullae on a person's skin. So with the Nikolsky sign, Nikolsky sign is actually when you take your finger and you apply traction to the, the bullae. With a Nikolsky sign, when it's positive, you applying attraction to that bullae will actually cause that bullae to erupt. With the Asbo Hansen sign, if you take your finger and actually put pressure on the bullae, it will actually extend outward. So that is the Asbo Hansen sign. Both of these clinical signs are positive with pemphigus vulgaris. And the reason why these signs are positive, why the bullae will erupt rapidly, and why the bullae are flaccid is all to do with the pathophysiology of pemphigus vulgaris. It is a production of IgG autoantibodies to superficial or surface proteins, desmoglein 1 and 3. So actually targets the very superficial skin layer. And that's why the outside of the bullae is so weak because the cells are actually weakened by the IgG autoantibodies. So that's why you can have a positive Nikolsky's and a positive Asbo Hansen. Now, some of the risk factors for pemphigus vulgaris include genetics. So oftentimes, Jewish, Asian, and even Mediterranean populations are at higher risk for developing pemphigus vulgaris. Some drugs can also elicit eruptions of pemphigus vulgaris. These include penicillamine and captopril. How do we make the diagnosis? The diagnosis can also be clinical, but you could also do some other laboratory investigations. Histopathology is one way, and the other way, what I want to remember is direct immunofluorescence. So direct immunofluorescence can be performed and you're going to see intraepidermal deposition of IgG and C3. So if you were to take a look under a microscope with direct immunofluorescence, you're going to see the outer layer of the skin being lit up. And treatment of pemphigus vulgaris is by using prednisone plus or minus rituximab depending on the severity of the case. So now that we've looked at pemphigus vulgaris, let's take a look at bullous pemphigoid. Pemphigoid is pemphigus-like. And bullous pemphigoid is a less severe, less serious condition compared to pemphigus vulgaris. Now, bullous pemphigoid is a chronic autoimmune skin condition with eruption of puritic, tense, and sepepidermal bullae. So we can already see that there are several differences between these two conditions. Bullous pemphigoid has a weeks to months long prodrome, which means that it takes some time for these bullae to form. It can often start as a puritic papular eczema-like lesion. So you might see this type of eczema-like lesion on an individual 
that's puritic, they start scratching, and then all of a sudden it starts to form into bullae. That's actually a bullous pemphigoid condition. This condition often affects the flexor aspects of the forearms, the axillae, and the medial thighs. The median age of onset of bullous pemphigoid is an older individual. It's around 60 to 80 years old. And with this condition, the Kolsky sign is negative. So if you were to try to apply pressure to one of these bullae, they're not going to erupt because they're tense bullae. And they're tense, again, because of the pathophysiology of this condition. This time, it's IgG autoantibodies to hemidesmosomes. So these hemidesmosomes are deeper. They're actually within the basement membrane. So instead of the IgG autoantibodies attacking the, the surface bullet, it's actually attacking the basement membrane underneath. So that's why the outer layer is actually very tense and very difficult to erupt because it's an, actually not weakened. It's the basement membrane that's been weakened underneath. The diagnosis of bullous pemphigoid is again by direct aminofluorescence. But this time, if we were to look under the microscope, we're going to see linear deposition of IgG and C3 located at the basement membrane. So instead of pemphigus vulgaris, we're going to see the outer layer of the bullae light up. With pemph uh, bullous pemphigoid, you're going to see the basement membrane light up. Now, the treatment of bullous pemphigoid is by way of topical corticosteroids. But if it's an extensive disease, it covers a lot of surface area, we're going to have to use systemic corticosteroids. So now that we've seen both conditions, let's just quickly summarize both and look at some of the key similarities and key differences between the two. So with pemphigus vulgaris and bullous pemphigoid, the similarities between the two are really not that much. One is that they are autoimmune conditions, and two is that they have bullae formation. But really, that's where their similarities end. With pemphigus vulgaris, we see a lot of differences. We see that the age of onset is younger. It's around 40 to 60 years old. It is more of a superficial cause. So remember, it is IgG autoantibodies attacking desmoglein 1 and 3 on the sur superficial surface. Again, Nikolsky sign is positive, ha Asbo Hansen sign is positive as well. And with pemphigus vulgaris, you're often going to see bullae in the mouth. Around 90% or more cases of pemphigus vulgaris are going to have bullae or the remnants of a bullae within the mouth. And again, this is a big key thing, is that in pemphigus vulgaris, the bullae are non-puritic and they are intraepidermal. In order to remember that it's a more of a superficial process, you can think of Pemphigus vulgaris, S for superficial, and distinguishing factors for bullous pemphigoid, we see that the age of onset is older. It's around 60 to 80 years old. It is a deeper process. It has autoantibodies targeting hemidesmosomes at the basement membrane. Nikolsky sign is negative with this condition. These bullae are tense as compared to the pemphigus vulgaris where they are flaccid and kind of loose. And in bullous pemphigoid, these uh, bullae are actually puritic, so they're a little itchy. And again, this process is a sub-epidermal process, is process. It occurs at the basement membrane. So a way to remember, you think of bullous pemphigoid, D, for deep. So those are the two ways to remember. Uh, pemphigus vulgaris, S, for superficial. Bullous pemphigoid, D, for deep. Now, if you want to learn more about other dermatological processes, please check out my other dermatological lessons. Uh, and if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing for more lessons like this one. And thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.